Hello everyone, welcome to what if Deku had Godzilla's power, Deku was Godzilla part 1. Before we start please go support Anthony Tyler 9 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Where everything began. This just an A kaiju attack has just been seen coming towards the shorelines of Japan. We urge our citizens to head to fallout shelters in order to get away from the kaiju A voice from the television said before it was turned off. A young man was seen standing near the front door of his home as he looked back at his mother who was behind him as well. Alright Izuku, do you have everything you need to go to the store with me? Izuku's mother asked. I have everything mom, we need to head out soon. The kaiju are coming near Japan's coast, so we need to keep everything short. Izuku said, as his mother sighed sadly before nodding. As the small family of two moved out of their home to get some groceries, they had failed to listen to the rest of the broadcast, as it made mention that those who were going to the shopping mall that day were going to be subjected to the battle of the kaiju that were duking it out. As Izuku and his mother walked around the aisles of the store, they felt the ground vibrate slightly as they looked to one another before nodding. Continuing to collect their things, they heard the roar of a kaiju nearby as the building was broken down, causing those within to run away. Izuku placed himself over his mother in order to protect her from the building's collapse. Once everything was said and done, Izuku woke up to a devastated area and to see two titans fighting against one another nearby, and he saw his mother near him as she tried to move some rubble. Izuku she called out as he groaned gaining her attention. Once she started to move the rubble out of the way, she managed to pull him out from underneath all of it when Izuku noticed how a stray blast of electricity and atomic energy was moving towards them. M mom we need to move Izuku said as he tried to move both himself and her out of the way only to be met with his mother blocking the hit from him. Don't worry baby, I will protect you. She said as both attacks hit her dead on and disintegrated her from this world but most importantly they were absorbed by his body. Gaizuku groaned as his body had felt so full that he couldn't move. What the heck just entered my body I I can't move at all Izuku thought to himself as he noticed the lack of the presence from his mother. Looking up from his groaning, he saw what remained of her clothing on the ground as her body was nowhere to be seen. Em mom? Izuku asked with a broken voice. In the sky a fight was happening between Godzilla and Ghidorah, the monster Zero had been attempting to get Godzilla to stand down, but he wouldn't. It wasn't long before Godzilla had forced the monster to flee from the area as he managed to drive him off. Godzilla looked around at the devastation of the city of Japan and he couldn't help but feel remorse for what had happened. His fight with Ghidorah had been pulled towards the innocence of Earth, but that is besides the point he was the king of the monsters and why did he bring the fight here? Looking around he found a small trace of radiation coming from the ground nearby and as he sat moved closer to the source, he soon found it. A small boy from his perspective was lying on the ground crying over a small pile of clothes that looked feminine oh dear. He killed a family member of a human again, sighing internally he had no idea of what to do, this boy had the gift of Mother Gaia and he couldn't allow him to be in the hands of the humans as of right now. He seemed to be relatively young, so that wouldn't matter for now. Leaning over he found the boy hearing his growling before looking up at him with shock, fear as well as sadness. It had been millions of years since he last connected with a human, but he must make sure that the little hatchling was alright and take him somewhere safe. Once he felt a connection with the small being he began to speak to him telepathically. Hello little human, I'm terribly sorry for what happened. I should have been able to keep Ghidorah away from this place. I can't keep you in the hands of humans for a while, Mother Gaia's gift has been developing within you for a small while. You need to gestate within a radiated core in order to develop further. Godzilla said to the young boy. He looked around the place to try and find where the voice was coming from before looking up and pointing at him. Giving the boy a nod, he looks at the clothes on the ground before grabbing them, and as soon as Godzilla's hand was lowered enough to pick him up, he climbed on as they headed towards the nearest water source. I'm going to have to place you within my mouth in order to keep you alive. I'm sorry. Godzilla said, as Izuku nodded his head as he was placed inside the monster's mouth. Once it was completed, Godzilla found the ocean as he entered it and swam towards where his radiator core was within the planet. As soon as a few hours had passed, they arrived within the core and it was revealed to be the lost city of Atlantis. Godzilla opened his maw and placed the young boy on the ground as Izuku explored the area, he knew that Godzilla and Ghidorah was the cause of his mother's death, but he didn't blame the protector of Earth for it. He was only fighting with the monster so that he wouldn't cause the end of the planet, so he would place the entire blame on the monster for it. As soon as Godzilla had placed himself near the core of the planet, he started to absorb the radiation of the planet as he rejuvenated himself. Izuku at this point had placed himself against his giant arm as he laid back holding the clothes of his late mother. What happens to me now? Izuku asked. You will undergo the transformation of becoming a titan. But other than that, you will get to keep your body. Godzilla said as he slowly glowed a dark blue and black before revealing his human form. 
He was taller than Izuku's father at 6'7", and had gray scales that covered his arms and legs, as well as upper torso around his neck. The scales formed a sort of armor around the man as he held a Nadachi sword on his hip. On his rear, his tail moved out as far as twice his human form. I'm terribly sorry about what happened to your mother, but in order to fully make you a titan, I will need to place you within an egg before giving you the right of reincarnation. Godzilla said as he led Izuku over to where an egg was placed. WH what happened to this egg? Izuku asked. This egg was what used to be my son. But as you can see it has been broken to pieces. Ghidorah had broken it since it had traces of my mate's blood within. Godzilla said, growling. So what does that have to do with me? Izuku asked as Godzilla looked sad at him. I would have to consume you and the egg so that it could be bonded with both me and Mothra. Once the process is complete. I will essentially lay the egg here so that you could gestate to become a new Gajira. Godzilla said, looking down at the ground. Oh, well at least I have a choice, right? Izuku asked. Well there is either that or experience the pain of having to become a titan without that method. Your body would be placed under many pressures in order to transform you into one of us, but you would still become similar to myself since my power is coursing through you. But you would also have the power over electricity based on the power of Ghidorah I sense within you. Godzilla said as Izuku looked pale. Why you know what, I think I would rather take the egg option. Izuku mumbled as Godzilla rubbed the boy's back. Oh yeah, before the ceremony begins you will need to know what will happen once you become one of my kind. Godzilla said as Izuku pulled out a notebook from seemingly nowhere. Once you become part of my race you will gain instincts to either mate with someone nearby because of your alpha predator instincts. But that won't happen until your titan blood would become as old as you are now. Godzilla said as Izuku looked at him weirdly. Godzilla, you do know that I am 14, right? Izuku asked as the creature looked at him shocked. I, I thought you were just a 10 year old he said, placing his hands over the sides of his face. Well I look younger than I am because of the fact that I am short. So I, I always wanted to be slightly taller to seem more like my age. But whatever, that means people would not take me seriously. Izuku said as he looked at the egg. Um, so how do we do this? Izuku asked as Godzilla gained a serious look. You climb into the egg and as it closes around you I will transform into my titan form and swim over to Mothra's home. There we will. You know what, before the egg is in bed with both of our powers. But if anything, you would become a titan since you would be lathered in our you know. Godzilla said as Izuku nodded his head blushing. Well when should we start? Izuku asked as Godzilla looked at him for a second before thinking. Do you want to do it now? He asked as Izuku nodded. Alright let's begin the process. Godzilla said as Izuku climbed into the 2 meter tall egg. As soon as he was situated inside of the egg, he watched as the flaps of the egg had folded over leaving Izuku in darkness as he felt the surrounding eggshell be lifted from the ground and be completely eaten. He felt the egg's walls be pushed against his body as the egg got his measurements from being squeezed tight. As soon as that was done, Izuku felt something prodding his skin and found some needle-like threads that were piercing though his skin. Oh wow, that is weird but slightly worrying. Izuku said to himself as he felt the world around himself become more and more distant from consciousness. On the outside, Godzilla had entered the water as he made his way over to his mate Mothra, he knew that the insect would be happy about him, giving her another chance to have a child once more. He could only hope that Ghidorah wouldn't find out about this egg, and he would make sure that it was hidden properly in the case that he died against a foul creature. Time seems to fly for Izuku as he sat in the egg as it slowly filled with weird juices, he had no idea what was happening on the outside world, but it felt weird. The glowing liquid was moving about his feet as they moved towards his upper body, and his body for some reason glowed as well. He felt his conscious was fading little by little as he tried his best to stay awake for this process, unknown to him the action outside was getting near its climax. It wasn't that long after the event happened that Izuku lost consciousness as the liquid juices had covered his entire body and head with them. As Izuku lost consciousness he was feeling his body becoming more and more similar to Godzilla's as he was reliving his memories as a child being born as a human to Inko Midoriya and Hisashi Midoriya. The man never really stayed with them since he was reportedly an accident to his father, since the man never wanted kids and had somehow gotten his mother pregnant. Then came the four-year time skip to his fourth birthday as he was taken to the doctor about five weeks afterwards since his quirk just wouldn't appear. You should probably just give up. The doctor told him as the scene changed to how Izuku sat in front of his computer looking at a video which gave him his dream to be a hero. Fear not citizens for I am here a manly voice called out. Oh my god, he has saved a hundred people already and he just doesn't stop another voice called out. A younger Izuku around four years of age had been looking at the video with sadness shown on his face as tears brimmed his eyes. His mother entered the room as she saw his look as well as the tears building up. Can I be a hero too? 
The younger Izuku asked as he stared at his mother. Tears brimmed her eyes before they were released as she ran over and hugged her son, apologizing for not being capable of giving him a quirk. And apologizing for not being able to help him in his sadness as well as not being able to be like everyone else. The scene changed once again to where Izuku is now six years old as he stands before his friend Kakin the boy using his quirk to explode his hands in an intimidating way. What are you supposed to do Deku? Your quirkless Kakin said. I I will stop you a hero doesn't pee pick on others, K Kakin Izuku said as he stared at him. Huh? What are you talking about I am just showing them their place Kakin said as he stared at Izuku fearly. W what you are d doing K Kakin it's v villainous Izuku said, causing the boy to stare at him angrily. I I will be the hero one I am not going to be told that I am a villain by you, you quirkless free Kakin said as he exploded Izuku many times that day. Laying on the ground, he never noticed how the young boy he had saved had ran off long before Izuku had been beaten up. Ah, it was that day that I learned that not everyone is treated as equal. Izuku thought to himself as the dreams changed again. This time it was near the middle school years of his life, from what he remembered the early years of his school life. He was in his sixth grade when these events are happening now, oh shoot. Kakin is now taller than Izuku as said boy is now at least a few inches below the boy in height. Izuku was sent flying into a brick wall as he held his left arm in pain, it was red, as well as bleeding from how his bone was sticking out of his bicep. Maybe that will teach you to not spout your crap, you worthless Deku you are just a pebble on my path to become the number one hero Kakin spouted with a feral grin. Izuku waited until the boy left before heading to the nurse's office in order to get his arm fixed, but as soon as he arrived at the room, he saw that the woman wasn't there this time. Finding a few materials in order to set his arm back into place, he pushed the bone back into his arm as he grunted in massive pain. Pant 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 I will try to keep my thoughts from coming out. That might get K Kakin to leave em me alone. Izuku said as he covered his wound with some bandages. That was when the nurse had entered and looked at him with a sneer. What are you doing in here you quirkless animal she said as she grabbed his arm that was seriously hurt. Ga Izuku called out in pain as he was tossed out of the nurse's office. And stay out if you want to be looked at, go to the hospital, we have no place for quirkless freaks like you the nurse said as she shut the door. As soon as the memory was complete, he noticed how everything looked like it was coming to a head when it revealed his last memory that was incredibly hurtful to his mind. The classroom was filled with students as Izuku stared around the place and found his older self near the back of the room, too enthralled with his notebook. The others around him made comments about his quirklessness as he started to curl in on himself. It wasn't long after that the teacher entered the class talking about future careers as well as what high school the students wanted to go to. As soon as his name was stated though, that was when all hell broke loose as Kakin had moved to attack him. Blowing up his desk causing him to flinch hard and fall out of it as Kakin himself had grabbed his collar and started spewing his dream of being a hero without a quirk as being that a dream. Before causing the whole class to talk about how he is being quirkless, couldn't get into the same school as Kakin since he had no quirk to rely on. The dream-like memory slightly changes as it now reveals Kakin's last words to him before the attack at the mall, and Izuku just looks tired now. Hey, we're not done yet Deku. Kakin said as Izuku looked up from his seat. As the Izuku in the memory looks over at Kakin, he stood up as soon as his notebook was taken from him. Hero analysis for the future. What a nerd one of Kakin's lackey said as he laughed at Izuku. Still trying to be a hero with your stalker notes. Well maybe this will help you remember that your dream is not realistic Kakin said, blowing up the notes. Knew I worked so hard to get those do you realize how much work went into that Izuku in the memory called out. They are just stalker notes, I'm sure that you have another copy somewhere at your home. Well I will say this though there might be a way for you to become a hero. Kakin said as Izuku looked over in hope. Maybe he will give me the courage to become one Izuku thought foolishly. Pre you get a quirk in your next life and jump off the roof, maybe then you might be able to become a hero Katsuki said as he walked over to the door. Inside Izuku's head what was akin to glass shattering in his mind was heard as soon as he heard Kakin's words. Izuku stared at Katsuki in fury as the young man had activated his quirk illegally in order to call the boy's anger and replace it with fear. Izuku would then be seen walking out of the school a few hours later in the memory as he arrived at his home with a sad expression that his mother caught sight of. What is wrong Izuku? In Komitoriya, Izuku's mother asked. And nothing, just. I'm not hungry tonight mom. I need to think about some things. Izuku said as he thought about what Katsuki told him. As soon as everything was said and done, the flaps above Izuku's head opened up after an eternity and he slowly woke up from his slumber. Climbing out of his egg chamber and falling to the ground, he looked about the area as he tried to wonder what in the world just happened. Titanic introductions, Godzilla and Mothra watched over the egg as they were preparing for the arrival of their new goji pup, and they were over the moon over it. 
they had been collecting tons upon tons of radiation in order to feed it before the child would come out after the ride of reincarnation. During the first month both parents have been getting weird dreams about their pup's life before becoming a titan and now they wanted to murder this person named Kakan. In these dreams they were like more memories of their pup as a human than anything else, they were surprised when they found out that his peers didn't do a thing for when it came to treating him well. They knew that their pup needed all the attention they could get before entering that school he talked about with his mother in these dreams, but that would require a few more months of training to be completed as soon as his egg hatched. It was near the fifth month that Goji and Mothra were getting antsy about why the egg wasn't hatching, thoughts about whether they accidentally crushed the life form inside the egg crossed their minds many times, that was until the egg flaps opened up on top. As they watched as a small Gajira was climbing out of the egg, they cooted how it crawled on all fours like a lizard. It then looked around itself as if trying to figure out what was going on, before seemingly noticing their presence and looking up. It was a surprise to be sure when they saw the dark marks covering his cheeks as if they were freckles, as well as the piercing jade eyes staring into their blue, as well as Mothra's blue eyes as well. Moving his face downward, Godzilla placed his maw near the baby's maw as he connected to the child on a telepathic level. Oh my god, what happened to me I can't believe that I look like you do I call you dad and mom what do I do the little Gajira's mind scrambled to think as it thought it was thinking to itself. Godzilla and Mothra chuckled in their grunts and soft roars as the little Gajira startled and looked up at them. You can call us anything you want pup. You are a child now, a child of Mother Earth. Godzilla said as Mothra looked down at the little Gajira. Goji was correct in his little assumption about what you would do as soon as awakening. Mothra giggled as the little Gajira looked up. W who are why you? He asked, his little tail wagging all the while. My name is Mothra, but the Japanese people of Monarch call me Masura. Nice to meet you Izuku. Mothra said, as she stared at Izuku before transforming into a humanoid form. Godzilla did the same as Izuku followed suit as they became their human counterparts, Godzilla looking like an Olympian god who was ready for battle, as Mothra looked as if she was a goddess of Greece. Mothra's human form had long blonde white hair that extended to her upper back, as her fluff from her moth form had centered itself around her chest and lower neck. Her eyes were an orange-black color for her pupils, as they showed her moth form in them, looking at Izuku she found that his form looked similar to Godzilla's, except for the missing blade, as well as her eyes of what he looked like as a titan. Nice to formally meet you Izuku Midoriya. I am Mothra, queen of the monsters. Mothra said, introducing herself. Izuku looked completely confused as he then bowed to her as she giggled at his formality. Don't do that little pup, you will be the heir to the throne as the next in line to become Godzilla. Goji said, as he huffed. Izuku looked at them before feeling something growing out of his back and looked to see that his form had large spines like a stegosaurus and his tail had the coloring as well as some fluff from his titan mother. As he stared at his surroundings now, he noticed that there was a skeleton nearby that seemed similar to an old enemy of Godzilla. I is that Angerus? Izuku asked, pointing at the skeleton. Nope, that was his far distant relative though. It was Ankylagoras. Godzilla said, ruffling Izuku's now more fluffy hair. You wish to become a hero correct son? Godzilla asked, incredibly serious. Yes, more than anything. But even after All Might stopped that dream from becoming true with his words, I still wish to become one. Even if it is as an underground hero. Izuku said, as Mothra stated something. You know with your appearance, you could be mistaken as a mutated human being with a quirk. You can breathe atomic rays like your father and have the power over electricity like Ghidorah. But most importantly, you could reincarnate yourself should your old form which is what you are now and transform into your titan self. Mothra said, as she let Izuku think about this. Wait so you mean that I am effectively immortal? Izuku asked, as Mothra looked at him. Not exactly. Should your egg if you lay one nearby be destroyed. You will die, but it will take almost a hundred years before you could reincarnate with your powers. Mothra said, as Izuku nodded his head. We will be getting you to learn how to fight with your titan form, as well as human form to be completely prepared for your first year as a hero student. But above all else, you will need to hold yourself back in order to make sure that you don't kill anyone on accident. This training you will be doing will increase your base power and strength with your current abilities and bring them higher than ever. Godzilla said, as Izuku nodded. I need to get stronger so that I can become a hero for everyone. I will bring smiles to people's faces, just like All Might did. But I won't tell someone that their dreams are unattainable or tell them to be realistic. I will encourage them to become heroes even if the people around them tell them not to. Izuku declared as Godzilla got into a fighting stance. Then get prepared for five months of pure torture, because by the end of these five months, you will be as strong as I was at your age when I was in the Hollow Earth battling for supremacy against the Kongs. Godzilla said, rushing his son. Over the last five months, Izuku had been training in order to become a hero at UA, he had also been getting abilities to be added to his repertoire from Mothra. 
He was walking around the lost city of Atlantis when a submarine entered the area and humans were making their way through it. Thinking quickly, Izuku entered his titan form as he hid from them. He had no clue as to who or what they were or why they were here, but he needed to be hidden from them. From what the radiation signal is stating, there was a smaller life form within the chambers that Godzilla lives and sleeps in. An old voice called out. Are you sure Rick? Last time I checked, Godzilla was highly territorial especially to us. A female voice called out. It was here that Izuku revealed himself as he stomped over to them as he had grown to be as tall as Godzilla was in the 1950s at around 50 meters tall. They all stared at him with confusion before stating something that was correct on all fronts. D, did he have a child they all screamed, they all started to slowly but surely move away from Izuku as he moved closer to them on all fours. This is a discovery of a lifetime we need to talk to Dr. Surizawa about this, he will be happy to find out that Godzilla has been procreating a newer version of his species the female said, as Izuku got annoyed as he grabbed the woman softly. As he lifted her to his eyes, she couldn't help but notice how curious he was about her, as well as how expressive they were. They also seemed to have another form in them as she got a closer look and took a picture. See could you put me down little Gajira? She asked, concerned for her safety. Izuku being the nice person that he was placed her down softly as he moved along with them getting on all fours and lowering himself to their height. W what do you think he's doing? One of the men asked as Izuku stared at them expectantly. I I think he wishes to give us a ride. One of the scientist men said as he climbed on top of Izuku's back holding onto his spines. The others had then grabbed onto his spines and activated their pressurized suits in order to protect themselves from the pressures of the ocean water. They had also taken to heart that this Godzilla child had gills on his neck as well, same as his father. They were pleasantly surprised to find out that they were being swam out of the radiation-filled area and back to the surface. Once the monarch station that was there had noticed his presence, they had prepared for another Ghidorah situation, but found that to be impossible, since Izuku was the only one there with their people. A man came out of the massive station as he had a shocked look on his face, as the people and woman walked over to the man. W what is this? H how did Godzilla have another version of his species the man asked, almost hysterically laughing. It is as you said sir, he managed to have a child with Mothra the woman said, as Izuku huffed in his titan form as he rose up to be at their eyesight level on the station. Looking at his presence the man who arrived on the scene walked over to Izuku's face, as he could remember what Godzilla looked like in his high day. Look at you, are you the child of Godzilla and Mothra? He asked curiously as Izuku nodded. Why you can understand us? He asked, bewildered. Another nod confirmed his suspicions as the man stared at him concerned. Izuku thinking nothing of what he was going to do, connected his mind to that of the man as he felt a tingle down his spine as Izuku's eyes glowed. Are you Dr. Surizawa? Izuku asked as the man looked floored as he looked at everyone else. Are you talking to me little Goji? The man asked and received a nod. I am Dr. Ishiro Surizawa and I am the director of Monarch. I hope to know what happened to such a being like you to be born. The man asked. My name is Midoriya Izuku, or I should say Gasura. I am the child of Godzilla and Mothra. Sorry I have an identity crisis whenever I am in this form. But I am Izuku Midoriya as a human, I was born human, but entered a rite of reincarnation because I had Gaia's gift within my body. Izuku said, as the man looked at him confused. Your name is Gasura, a mix of Godzilla Gajira and Mothra Masura Magnificent A mix between different breeds Sirizawa said, as he laughed before running off. Tearing the connection with him and the giant titan behind him in the process, he made his way into the building inside the station to add a new titan on the charts of others. I think that you just made his day there. The woman said as she stared at Izuku's confused expression. My name is Vivienne Graham and I am Sarazawa's second in command of Monarch. It's nice to meet you little Goji. She said as she held out a left hand. Izuku pointed his finger at her as she gripped it tightly as she tried to shake it only to be lifted off the ground as Izuku shook hers. After a large amount of clicks as well as groans, Izuku had to leave since he could feel his father's presence calling him back to Atlantis. As soon as he disappeared from the area, Monarch had gotten together in order to keep an eye on the young titan as he traversed through the waters. I can only hope that this youngster can become an even better Godzilla than his father. Tsurizawa stated as he stared at the number of Gajiras he had placed on his wall, that only being three that he could place. Dagon, Godzilla himself, and Izuku. Smiling to himself he gears himself up to head to Japan in order to tell the Japanese government about what happened to the missing boy Midoriya Izuku. The whole way there, Izuku was struggling with keeping his mentality correct as he was trying to not let either personality of his titan form and human form get the better of the other. As soon as he arrived in Atlantis, he transformed back into his humanoid form as his father walked over to him in his titan form. 
Izuku stood up as tall as he could from where he was as his hair was ruffled by the big G-man, said man was picking Izuku up now as he was about to get a massive quantity of radiation to eat from the earth. Once that was completed, Godzilla had looked to his son as he made a face that meant that something was wrong. What is wrong? Izuku asked as Gajira stared him in the eye. You need to find your champion. Gajira said. The way entrance exams. Ak and let's become heroes together a younger Izuku said, happily running through a forest. Don't make me laugh, Deku you aren't even worthy of becoming my sidekick your quirkless Kakin said, angrily. S stop S slow down K Kakin Izuku called out as his small legs tried their best in order to catch up to his friend. A squad of kids had arrived at a small underpass of wood and logs as Kakin had begun to make his way across the wet log from the rain they had the previous night. K Kakin, you should be careful on wet things. Izuku said, looking worried. I don't need you to say that, Deku I'm far better Kakin couldn't finish his words as he slipped from the log and into the small creek. As Kakin had landed on his butt, he started to sniffle since it really hurt his backside, but as his friends asked if he was alright from afar, he screamed out that he was fine. He was about to get up when Izuku was running down the small slope to get to him. Kakin the little boy screamed, worry written all over his face. Running up to his seemingly hurt friend, Izuku placed a hand out to help him up. Are you okay? Izuku asked, as Kakin looked at his hand for a moment before swatting it away. Don't look down on me Deku I'm far better than you Kakin said, shoving him to the ground and running off. W wait D don't leave me K Kakin Izuku said, running after the blonde haired boy. As Izuku breathed in a whole lot of air from the memory. Getting up from where he was lying on the ground, Izuku moved around the place in his titan form as he shook some water off his body. Looking around the place he soon found out that it was empty, sighing softly, he moved towards where the water was in order to move through the waterways, in order to make it to the surface. When he surfaced, the monarch facility had noticed the water placement moving about as they looked out towards the water and saw Izuku surface above the water before looking in different directions. It had been a few months since his first appearance to the facility and he had grown exponentially. His height in his titan form was now just a hundred meters below his father, and he was guaranteed to grow to be as tall as him or just slightly shorter than him. Looking around the ocean as well as the facility he saw that Dr. Surizawa had moved towards where he was floating aimlessly at the moment. Izuku, is there something wrong? You seem to be having a nightmare. Surizawa asked, concerned. Moving his hand to where the platform was Izuku transformed into his human form as he walked over to the man and sat down near him. He had come to view him as a second father and had gotten close to him enough that he would allow him to pet his head. Jay just some memory from my life as a four-year-old. And nothing too bad. I got my entrance exams today at UA. Did you hear about what happened to dad and mom? Izuku asked as Sarazawa looked at him softly. They are still in the hollow earth discussing terms of peace between them and Kong. I don't know what it is about, but they are rehashing some terms of agreement. Sarazawa said, petting the boy's head. I got to head out, wish me luck. Izuku asked looking at the man. I wish you the best of luck. As well for the opponents you will be going up against. The man said, chuckling as Izuku jumped into the ocean. As he transformed into his titan form and swam to the shore, Surizawa made sure to contact Yue that a certain kaiju son was making his way over to their school. About five hours later, since it was around five o'clock in the morning at the beach, Izuku had made landfall as he transformed into his human form. Looking at his reflection, Izuku saw that his eyes gained a hue of blue and orange within his jade-colored eyes. His hair had still been messy like usual, but it gained some blue tips at the edge of his forest green color. He walked over to the steps as he made his way towards the school of his dreams before he became a titan. He wouldn't need to rely on food as much nowadays since he could consume radiation in order to survive, but that didn't matter to him. He had an entrance exam to win as well as pass in order to learn how to become a hero. When he arrived to the school in question, Izuku saw that the sun was now up high in the air as it placed a beam of light over the school. This is the first step I have to become a hero. Izuku said as a gruff and angry voice called out behind him. Watch it lizard face as Izuku froze for a minute second, he turned to look at the boy who he hadn't heard in about 10 months. The boy was revealed to be blonde haired as well as ruby eyed young man who had a sneer on his face as he looked at Izuku. So, what are you doing here Deku? The boy asked as Izuku visibly shook a little before shaking his head. Whoever gets the most points has to buy the other's lunch. Izuku said, holding his hand out. From the boy's view Izuku had changed from a timid boy who was trembling in his presence alone, but the boy in front of him now had the backbone that he had tried to pull out of him for years. About damn time you grew a backbone Deku, but at least make sure you can keep your promises. I thought you were quirkless. The boy said, rather mellowly. I became a titan because of the energy I somehow absorbed from Godzilla and Ghidorah, Kakin. Izuku said, as Kakin nodded his head. Well I will show you why you are a useless Deku. 
And make sure to rub it in your face by then as well. Kakin said, as Izuku sighed in relief. From the last time they had talked to one another, they had been polar opposites, and Kakin had been wishing to attack him at any moment. After a few minutes of waiting for the entrance exam's written portion to begin Izuku was writing answers for the test. It wasn't until around 30 minutes later that Izuku had finished the test as he left the room leaving his test on his desk, since the teacher had noticed his movement stopped. Izuku entered a room with some other examinees as they waited for the proctor of the exam to talk about the practical portion of the test. About 25 minutes after everyone was gathered into the auditorium, a man with raised blonde hair and shades covering his eyes stepped up to the podium. Hello everyone and welcome to UA Academy can I get a yeah he called out and placed a hand over his ear. Silence reigned over the auditorium as the man shuddered at how quiet it was. You are no joke well let's start on explaining the rules to the entrance exams are you ready he asked in complete hyping of the explanation. He got silence once more as Izuku in his seat started to gush about how the man on the stage is present Mick, as well as how he used to listen to his talk show every Friday night. Hakan had promptly told him to shut up, and as soon as he quieted down, present Mick began to talk about the one three-pointer robots in quick succession. Excuse me I have a question a navy blue-haired boy with a ramrod straight stance yelled out raising his hand. What can I do for you examinee 7111? Present Mick called out. On the pamphlet here, it clearly states that there are four robots that we have to defeat, but you have only talked about the previous three, if this is a mistake on behalf of UA's information department, then that is highly disrespectful of a building to do that the young man said, as present Mick placated him. Alright don't get your panties in a bunch examinee 7111, that is the zero pointer. It is worth exactly as it is called. Zero points. Zilch, nada. That is basically a thwomp from Super Mario Bros. It is a mere obstacle as well as if you attack it, you will lose all your points present Mick called back to the student. Thank you for your answer. Now as for you the one with forest messy hair if you are only here to gush about heroes, then you should leave we do not need your incessant muttering to distract us from trying to pass the test the boy said, as Izuku clamped his mouth shut as Kak and laughed from afar. Alright, cool your jets there, examinee 7111. Now that is all I have to say other than this one phrase. As Napoleon once said, true heroes are capable of overcoming all obstacles. And with that I will leave you with our school's motto plus ultra present Mick called out as Izuku moved out towards the area he was going to be at. At the arena that he was going to attend Izuku stood off to the side as he stretched his body out and cracking some bones that needed to be popped. As soon as he gained a feral smirk on his face he watched as the doors began to open up as present Mick got ready to start the countdown. But as soon as the doors were completely opened, Izuku ran off as some of the other students made similar comments about how he would be disqualified for going before the sound went off. But as present Mick didn't start the countdown, a brown-haired girl, examinee 7111, and a couple of others followed Izuku's example as they went into the arena to take down bots. It wasn't much longer when the other students were told that there was no goes for fighting villains and told them all to get points before there isn't any more to collect. With all the other students running into the city now to get points, Izuku was seen running around and beating down robots with his base strength as he trashed any that came up to him. His dorsal plates on his back were pulsating as they were showing his intimidation display. That makes my 20th point Izuku said, destroying a two-pointer. Within the monitor room, a group of judges were watching a few cameras placed in each zone as they watched the children fight the robots. It seems like we have a great crop this year. A woman said as she licked her lips. That boy with the dorsal plates, is he who we're supposed to keep an eye on? A man with an excavator helmet over his head asked. Yes, he is the son of the king of the monsters. We are to make sure that he doesn't fall to villainy. But at the same time, we are supposed to make sure that he can pass the overall exam. A small rodent-like creature said, smiling. The other cameras had shown other applicants who were showing their prowess in fighting the bots as they took them down each. Hell, there was an invisible girl who was taking down some of the robots by turning them off with her invisibility being a really good advantage. How long has it been since the exam had started? A sickly looking man asked. It's been exactly about 7 minutes. Let's send out the zero pointers. A scraggly haired man said as the creature who was watching with them pushed the button. Izuku was having a blast at the moment, he had saved a few people from decisions that would have gotten them hurt, but at the same time he was destroying these bots without issues, he was really glad to have Godzilla's anatomy for destruction, since he was really able to let loose without training with his dad. It was here that he gained his 79th point, and the ground started to rumble and shake as if there was an earthquake. Well if it isn't a problem. I should see if there is anyone who needs help Izuku said, as he ran towards the main street of the arena. He saw a bunch of people running about as they were fleeing from the massive gargantuan robot that was destroying buildings. Izuku began to walk towards the massive robot with a smirk on his face, as his alpha instincts were beginning to declare that he needed to make it submit. 
moving forwards, he noticed how there was a girl who was about to be crushed by rubble, and he moved as fast as he could, and as the girl noticed the rocks above her, she covered her head waiting for something to land on her. But nothing did, she opened her eyes and saw a massive creature standing above her and holding the rocks above her body. Placing the rocks over to the right, he gave her a nod as the girl ran away from the location, as Izuku's transformed state showed how beautiful his dorsal plates were on his back. Blowing with each plate, from his tail to his head, Izuku moved towards the robot intent on fully destroying it. The robot had only managed to reach up to his upper thigh in terms of height, and he was only around 99 meters tall. Izuku grabbed the metal robot as his tail began to glow from the plates there and began to make a thrumming sound. The sound got louder and louder as Izuku's body began to glow green in color, as if to show that he was about to use an attack that would be devastating. If that wasn't enough the Zero Pointer was calling for backup, since it was identifying Izuku as such a massive threat that it wished for backup to take him down. But just before the last made a call for the robot was about to be sent out, Izuku held the robot by its face and lifted it to stare him in the eyes as he tossed it in the air and released his breath towards it. The thrumming came to a halt as he released his built-up power and smashed it into the robot, sending it high in the air as it was pushed higher and higher into orbit. Everyone in each and every arena were looking at the sky as well as Izuku's general direction as they watched a zero pointer be completely obliterated and tossed into the atmosphere. As soon as the beam of green light had dissipated, Izuku stood over a small hell of dead robots as he roared out into the heavens. As he shook his head, he started to lower his body to the ground as he started to glow green again causing everyone to run away thinking that he would attack them. But as soon as the green glow ended, Izuku was revealed in his human form as he shook his body as multiple sections of his body was covered in ash as well as dust. It was here that the exams were ended as Izuku made his way over to the girl he had saved from the rocks. When she saw him she ran over to make sure that he was alright, but that was when she noticed his dorsal plates on his back. Why why your G Godzilla she called out fearfully. And no I'm not in my shoot. I am sort of his adopted son. Izuku asked as the girl stared at him for a moment before promptly passing out. The others around him stared at him as Izuku picked the girl up and moved to get her to recovery girl, thinking that she was in need of some healing. Alright children, let me take a look at your injuries come on, I don't have all day recovery girl called out as she kissed and moved on from person to person. As soon as she came up to Izuku and the sleeping girl, Izuku placed her on the ground as he told her what happened as the woman just sighed. She passed out from quirk exhaustion as well as too much information. I will need some help getting her to the infirmary Sunny. Recovery girl said as Izuku picked the girl up from the ground and followed the old woman to her office. As soon as the trio had entered the room, recovery girl gave Izuku some gummies as she told him to prepare for a letter to come to his home. Um I don't exactly have a home. See could you send it to the monarch base on the ocean at this exact location? Izuku asked, using a map to point in its general location. I could get Nezu to do that yes. I hope to never see you in my office in the future. She said, as Izuku looked a little glum now. I I don't think that is possible. Izuku said, as he moved towards the door. Why would you think that's sunny? She asked, as Izuku told her about what he did to the zero pointer. Well if it makes you feel better, I think you were a hero to the few people who you assisted. She said, smiling at him. He only returned a sad smile before leaving through the door as he walked down the hallways. It wasn't long until he left that the girl woke up as she felt extremely warm. W what happened? She asked. Izuku had been so sullen that he forgot to go with that dinner with Kakin as he left the school grounds. First day of UA. It was about three years before Izuku was entering the world of the Titans that he can see himself in this dream. He was walking to school, and it was around the first day of school for his first year of middle school. He had been minding his own business as he entered the school gates as he prepared for his day. He was walking through the halls as he made his way towards his classroom for the next year, and as entering the room, he heard the distinct sounds of crackling pops right behind himself. Turning around he was soon face to face with Kakin, as the young man stared him down with a fury that was borderlining on villainous actions about to be done. What the hell are you doing here, Deku? Kakin asked, as Izuku stared at him in fear. Jay just heading T to class S. Izuku said, stepping back away from the boy in clear fear. I was supposed to come to this worthless school and leave it to enter UA, why are you constantly following me Kakin called out, attacking Izuku. Izuku was smashed in the stomach as he was sent flying across the room and smacked into the wall behind himself as he grabbed his stomach. A girl ran over to him to make sure he was alright and looked at his pained expression. Are you alright? She asked as Izuku looked up. She had long black hair that was stylized like midnight as she stared at him with cerulean colored orbs. Unknown to her behind her, Kakin was rearing an arm back to explode her back for helping him. Izuku pushed her out of the way as the searing hot pain of an explosion of nitroglycerin, like sweat impacting his form and exploding. 
Dai Ai Izuku screamed as he flinched from his dreams and landed on the ground. Izuku moved towards the ocean water as he felt the phantom pain of his chest burning as he transformed into his titan form. He swam towards the surface of the ocean where the monarch base was located on the ocean when one of the scientists had run over to the edge where Izuku was located and helped him up. Are you alright Izuku the scientist asked concerned. Izuku looked up and found her wearing a scientist's similar garb as well as long beautiful blonde hair with glasses that made her eyes stand out. S sorry I didn't am mean to see cause any harm. Izuku mumbled as he rubbed his chest. The woman pulled him towards the infirmary as she started to work on his burn scar that was still flaring up. She had been told about his past as well as who made the burns, and she had been his primary doctor ever since. Her name was Melissa Shield, she had a knack for building and crafting support gear for heroes, but made a minor in getting a doctor's degree. She placed some burn cream on his chest as she helped him place the bandages over his chest, she had known him for about a few months now, as she was near his age range enough to care for him. Izuku whimpered as the memories of that traumatizing event in his life had caused him to sort of relapse, as he was trying to get the memory to subside. Another scientist had entered the room to find him being cared for by Melissa, as they cooed softly. I came here to ask why he was here, but now I see why. Vivienne said, smiling sadly. Burn Scar had been burning in his sleep. He was having a memory of a past event that happened in school. Melissa said, as Izuku nodded whimpering still. Don't worry, that young man can't hurt you anymore. Vivienne said, as she smiled at him. Now you have a first day of school to go to, you are in class 1A. Since you won the entrance exams of the year. Vivienne said, smiling at him. H how did I pass? I was sure that my points were redacted since I had destroyed the zero pointer. Izuku said, as the woman giggled softly. Only you can be this one dimensional in terms of heroism. You silly goose, you didn't lose any points, in fact that zero pointer was worth 60 points all on its own Melissa said, giggling. Oh, so what time should I be heading over to the school? Izuku asked, as the two girls stared at him. It's already around 6.30, you have about an hour to get there if you move it. Vivienne said, as Izuku got up and moved away to head to school. Thank you all, especially you Mel. Izuku said, as Melissa nodded. Izuku was now entering the beach of Dagaba as he was moving about the cleared beach. He had noticed that a small group of people were cleaning it up and he smiled every time he saw the clean beach. But now was not the time for reminiscing, he had to get to school before he was too late. Changing back to his human form he moved towards the street and revealed that he fit the human suit and tie for the school uniform perfectly. He was walking towards the school when he overheard a sound coming from behind him and found a young girl with brown hair moving towards him with a speed he had only seen from All Might and Ingenium. Hey are you Godzilla's little brother? She yelled as she finally caught up to him. You um no. I'm his son. Izuku said, confused as well as concerned. Well it's nice to meet you I'm Achako Uraka thank you for saving me at the entrance exams Uraka said, smiling at him. It's nothing. You don't have to repay me if that is what you're thinking. I just did what any hero should do, nothing more nothing less. Izuku said, as they both entered the school grounds. They arrived at the door to their class really fast, especially since Uraka had been riding on his tail during the walk. She had gotten tired out since she had sprinted all the way there and was needing a break, Izuku had been a little miffed when she used his tail as a rest stop, but he didn't mind. Entering the classroom, they were bombarded with a navy-haired boy yelling at Kakin, as if he was offending him. For the last time, take your feet off the desk, it will be seen as disrespecting the people and teachers who spent their time to creating it, the boy said as he chopped his hand in the air. What are you, an elitist? What school did you come from? Hakan asked, as Izuku became very worried. Let me reintroduce myself I am Iida Tenya from Samei Private Academy Iida Tenya introduced himself. Bakugo Katsuki, and I am going to enjoy beating you into the ground Kakin said, as he growled at the boy. B beat me are you sure that you belong in this conglomerate of a school? Iida called out, before Izuku coughed suddenly gaining their attention. Deku Bakugo growled. S sorry about interrupting um geez how do I talk to people again? Izuku mumbled to himself as Achako got off his tail. Hello there, my name is Iida Tenyu Iida began to speak as Izuku interrupted him again. Sorry for the interruption, but I should probably get to my seat because the teacher is here, and my name is Midoriya Izuku nice to meet you Iida. And I already heard you speaking to Kak Bakugo. Izuku said, as he walked over to his seat. I'm surprised that you noticed my presence. Well at least I don't have to reveal myself for another minute and a half. My name is Shouda Azawa, and I will be your homeroom teacher for the next three years. I'm sure that you have things you want to be doing at the start of the year, but put these on and meet me outside. As always said, as he walked out of the room and entered his cocoon of a sleeping bag and rolled away. I think he just reminded me that I should get Sila a new sleeping bag. I wonder if he would allow me to know where he gets that. Izuku mumbled as the others looked at him horrified. 
As the class were standing outside, the teacher made a remark about how they took about close to 35 seconds and that he would work on that in the future. Midoriya, you scored first in the entrance exams, what was the furthest you could throw a ball in middle school? Azawa asked, looking at the titan of a boy. L last I checked ab about 35 meters sir. Izuku said, looking down. Before you became a titaner after. The man asked, looking at him with a deadpan expression. Be before. Izuku said, curtly. Well make sure to use your quirk. And make sure that you don't leave the circle. As always said, as he tossed Izuku a ball. Wait he got first all the members of the class called out. Izuku moved into the circle as he wrapped his tail around his legs in order to keep it within the circle. I will place all my strength into this and make sure that I don't break any glass nearby. Izuku thought to himself as he remembered what his teacher said. By the way Azawa-sensei. I don't have a quirk Izuku screamed out the last word as the ball flew out of his hand and off in the distance. Multiple shock waves of wind were blown at everyone as they held onto each other in order to keep themselves from being blown away. Alright, you all need to know where your estimates are really at when using your quirks. The system thinks that it can still believe that all men are treated equally, but they are just holding off on it. This will test your true strengths at the use of your quirks, as well as how to improve them. As always said, as he revealed Izuku's number. It was revealed to be around 50,000 meters away from them. Holy shit 50,000 meters, how are we supposed to compete with that? An electric blonde haired boy called out. How the hell does Deku have a quirk he was quirkless all his life I will show him the place he deserves to be at, at my feet, Kitsuki growled at Izuku's returning form. Well let's get this started, moving on from that demonstration is the 50 meter dash. As always said, before someone opened their big mouth. If that is how this is going to be, this will be a lot of fun a pink skinned and haired girl said, jumping around. Fun you say. As always said, looking at the students who looked at him in slight fear minus Izuku dot well if you think that this will be fun, how about this little challenge for you all to complete. If you all don't take this as seriously as possible, I will expel the one person who is in last place. And you will have to leave the school in order to find a new school to go to. As always said, as Uraraka called him out. Why you can't just do that we just got here we worked really hard to get to where we are, that isn't fair Chako said, looking at the teacher. And what about disasters? Landslides, tornadoes, hurricanes, etc. You all are training to become heroes, and I have three years to make sure that you last longer than most heroes out there today. If you don't pass this test you will be expelled end of discussion. As always said, as everyone moved over to the next test. The tests for the quirk apprehension test went smoothly if you could call it that, everyone was doing their best to get top scores, as well as not be outed as expelled. Izuku was doing fairly well as he was getting constant top threes on the leaderboards in terms of control as well as power. The main reason he wasn't getting the top scores was because of the fact that he would be slower in his titan form, since that caused his mind to nearly break every time, he became it since there was a personality shift each time. He got second place on the 50 meter dash, second on the grip, third on the sideways jumps, third in the crunches, first in the push-ups, and third place consecutively for the last three events. It was here that their teacher looked over at them as he gave the scores for those on the leaderboards. Izuku was placed in third place as Azawa talked about not going over each and every student so that he doesn't get a headache from reading so much. As soon as the leaderboard was revealed Izuku was happy about his placement as the last place person was revealed to be a Minoru Mineta. And as soon as said boy saw that he was in last place, he screamed out in fear that he was going to be expelled before he could even create a harem for himself. But as soon as that was stated, Izuku moved closer to the girls as he covered them all with his tail defensively. He didn't know why he did that, but it felt right to block them away from the little bastard as he attempted to jump at the tallest girl in the class with grabby hands. But as soon as he was close to the woman, she began to create something before the boy was grabbed by a clawed hand. Everyone looked over to see what grabbed the boy, only to see Izuku's jade eyes glowing a vibrant orange as he stared the little bastard in the eye. You will take your expelling with dignity and leave without being told to. When the teacher said that he was going to expel someone he wasn't lying. Izuku said, as he held the boy in the air. Right as I said, Midoriya. But please don't do my job for me, Mineta leave the area and never come back again. I will be placing a black mark on your file for attempted hexwill assault. As always said, as Mineta ran off crying about telling his parents about this. As soon as the boy was out of earshot, Izuku's eyes became jade-colored once more as he turned to his class and apologized for the over-the-top attitude. Don't worry, he was making comments about our bodies the entire time. Echako said, as some of the other girls nodded their heads in agreement. Izuku followed the rest of the class at the rear in order to prevent anyone else from peeping on the girls as they made their way over to the locker rooms. But it was here that Izuku smelled the little pissant who was hiding inside the locker rooms as Izuku called the girls out. Girls Izuku yelled, gaining their attention. 
what is it Midoriya san? The tall girl asked, concerned. I'm sorry for how this sounds, but I need to enter the room really quick. There is a pissant who should have left by now in their hiding. Izuku growled at the door as the girls nodded and moved out of the way. Izuku continued to smell for the pungent odor that he was catching and followed it to Achako's locker, and he gripped the locker door and pulled it off the hinges, causing a loud shriek to be heard within. While the girls on the outside could hear the shriek, they overheard the sounds of thrumming from inside the room and went to investigate the issue. They all saw Izuku cornering Mineta with his dorsal plates thrumming with power as he growled at the small boy as he pissed himself. Girls call as Awa-sensei. I will keep the little bastard here. Izuku growled as most of the girls left the room except for Ichako. Looking at her locker she found white fluid sitting on her uniform as she was completely disgusted with the clothes now. Why you jacked off on my clothes she screeched, clearly in anger. Izuku hearing this was both angered but at the same time confused since he had never heard of what that phrase jacking off meant in his life. He had learned about the male anatomy in school during health class, but his teacher said that his was completely wrong for being a quirkless, meaning that he was infertile. So he never really had a reason to play with himself, so hearing a new way of saying it caused him confusion, but he kept growling at the boy to keep him still. I was kicked out of the hero course what did you expect me to do just sit there and twiddle my thumbs when I have a whole buffet of beautiful women at my back and call the little boy screeched. Just for that, I feel like I should atomize you. Women are not for screwing they are meant to be friends, allies, and maybe even more through building a relationship, they are not meant to be used as what's that word I'm looking for. Izuku growled back at the boy before losing the words that he wanted to say. A buck toy. Achako asked, concerned. Yeah that, women are to be treated as how you wish to be treated. If you wish to be treated like an equal to them, you are to act like a normal teen and not be a hormonal piece of crud who only looks at their chests and rears Izuku said, and Achako was now feeling a little blush building up. Izuku's skin was starting to turn red as he was becoming more and more furious with the little shit in front of himself. It was here that Izawa arrived at the room kicking the door down, quite literally, and ran over to where he could feel an intense heat coming from Izuku. Midoriya calmed down and moved away from Mineta. Izawa said, as Izuku looked at the teacher as he had his eyes red and staring at him. Sure thing Izawa-sensei. Can I ask the principal to make sure that your Raka-san can get a new uniform? Izuku asked as the teacher nodded his head. With that, Izuku and Ichako left the room and left the diminutive boy to his fate against their teacher. The duo was walking over to the principal's office as Ichako was silent about the encounter of Izuku and the perverted boy in her locker. H hey, thank you for stopping him. If I opened my locker, I probably would have been violated by him when us girls were changing in there. Ichako said as Izuku looked over at her. She also noticed that one of his eyes had been red in color as he slowly shook his head, getting his anger and fury down enough to speak. And no, it's fine and anyone else could have noticed his presence in there. Jijiro, I think that was her name. The girl with the earphone jacks for ears. Izuku asked a girl as Achako nodded. She could basically hear his heartbeat as well as breathing if she tried hard enough. I could smell him because of my extremely heightened sense of smell, his smell was so horrible that I had to stay away from him at all times at the tests outside. Izuku explained as she noticed his solemn look. Are you feeling sorry for him? Achako asked, concerned. It's probably my heroic heart that my M mother told me about, but I can't just help but to go seek out to help people with their own problems. It just makes me feel happy when I can save people, I believe that a true hero is someone who will save you, no matter what the situation or circumstances are. Izuku said, as they finally arrived at the door. As soon as Izuku was about to knock on the door, it opened up to reveal a somewhat furious man talking to the principal, as the said principal's fur was bristling. For the last time Nezu, you are to expel that dorsal platted brat immediately the man screamed at the principal. And how many times do I have to tell you Mr. Mineta that your son had tried to get his hands on multiple women at my school in just the starting hours of the day. Then when he was expelled for misconduct with the women in his classroom, he hides in your Raka-sen's locker and as she said herself jacked off all over her clothes and now wishes to get a new uniform correct. Nezu asked as he stared at the two new arrivals. Why yeah. Izuku said as Achako nodded her head. Well the clothes are right next to me, I had a feeling that this would happen so here you go. Nezu said, as Achako walked next to the creature of a principal. Thank you, principal, I should get going now. Achako said, running off in fear. Izuku continued into the room as he closed the door behind himself. Now that your Raka-san is out of the area, how about we talk about your misconduct Mr. Mineta-san? Nezu said, as Izuku's dorsal plates released a glow in the room as Izuku growled at the man. Why isn't he being punished I am a part of the UA board of teachers, I demand that my son be given his chance to become a hero the man called out as Izuku looked at the man with scrutiny. 
Sir, all due respect that I won't be able to give to you at the moment, your son had explicitly stated multiple times on the field that he would love to, and I quote. I would love to buck that girl with the big tits and buck the girl with a nice ass. And I was so disgusted with his wording that I feel like I'm about to vomit right now for saying it. Izuku said, as he stared at the man angrily. That was perfectly good for a quote Midoriya Shonen now, what do you have to say now for your son's safety within our prestigious academy? Nezu asked as the man shot up with a gun and pointed it at Izuku. Faster than anyone could react, the man shot his gun to Izuku's head as the gun's barrel had smoke coming out of it. But just as the man was grinning in his victory, a tail slapped him into the seat as Nezu crawled over him and placed a quirk suppression cuff over his wrists. You Mr. Mineta San are hereby under arrest for the attempted murder of the son of the king of the monsters. Nezu said as the man looked at Izuku's dorsal plates with fury as well as fear. Then he saw that Izuku caught the bullet with his teeth and Izuku's teeth then crunched down on the metal before spitting both pieces of the bullet out onto the floor. I should probably leave Nezu San huh? Izuku asked as the principal nodded as he left through the door. My son will be avenged you hear me the man screamed as Izuku walked down the hallway to go to his homeroom class. Battle training. Izuku woke up from his encounter with Kakin with a massive migraine, he was nearly at the end of elementary school in the final year. He had been trying to get the boy to stop attacking others in favor of attacking him instead, he had always wanted to be a hero since he learned about them as a four-year-old. He was on his way home after a particularly bad beating from the explosive boy as he rubbed his arm in slight pain as a burning sensation was pounding his arm and his blood was rushing to his head. He had been hit with an explosion to the head and his brain was still rattling from the experience and had gifted him with a migraine for it. He had done nothing wrong, but apparently just walking in the same hallway as Kakin had been enough of a wrong for the boy to outright attack in front of teachers. Izuku couldn't trust teachers anymore after that day, he just couldn't trust in them being capable of stopping a fight when it should happen. Izuku had seen Kakin threaten the teachers with excessive force that the teachers just learned to just accept when they wouldn't allow the quirkless child to do anything else. Izuku was on his way back home when he heard the telltale signs of an explosion coming for him from behind, and he tried to dodge the attack as fast as possible. But with the legs of a nine-year-old it was kind of hard. But he had managed to dodge each attack as the other boy was glaring at him with a fury that was on top of the world. What the buck did I tell you about dodging my attacks Deku the boy screamed at his face. K Kakin, see can you please leave me alone today. Why you'd already attacked Emni already why you made your point Izuku said, screaming back at the boy. Apparently, that wasn't the right choice of words as the young bomber had launched at him once more and had landed more blows to his chest as well as lower legs. He jumped onto Izuku's nine-year-old frame as he held the boy down with just his weight alone since Izuku hadn't really spent all that much time to training his body physically. That was when Izuku felt a burning sensation on his lower thigh as well as reran Izuku yelped in pain as the burning sensation was massive. Izuku woke up staring at the sky as his old burns on his left thigh and right cheek on his rear started to flare up in pain. Standing up from his small bed, he moved about the area within the radiated entrance to the hollow earth in order to fully awaken himself from his slumber. He had noticed that he was in his titan form once again as he shook his head as a familiar voice in his head started to speak. You should tell dad and mom about your nightmares. They're becoming too much to bear a feminine voice called out. I know, but I can't let them know. They'll try and find Kakin and attempt to kill him. Izuku said as the feminine voice spoke once more. I know that you want the best for that boy, but maybe you gave your last olive branch to help him. He has wanted nothing more from you than for you to die, is that how a friend talks to others? The voice asked. Em mom, I don't know if I can stop sending out olive branches for him to grab. I am trying my best to be as forgiving as possible. I will continue to do so in order to protect him from himself, if he is left to his own devices for too long, villains will take advantage of his mincid. Izuku said, shaking his head. Tears were brimming at his eyes as he shook his head, remembering her voice was nice and all, but it kind of hurt when his mother's voice came out as a voice in his head that was similar to Mothra's thrumming chirps. I have to go to school, I don't know what we will be doing for that exact class, but I believe that it has something to do with All Might. Izuku said as he looked at the mirage of his mother as he remembers her best. When he was a four-year-old and was viewing her as the strongest woman in his world. She was tall and skinny, a slim waist as well as a beautiful body, but overall, he just misses how soft her voice was towards him all the time. He entered the ocean waters of the Pacific as he swam towards the sandy beach of Dagaba Municipal Beach Park, as once, he landed he walked over towards the school he went to. When he arrived at the school, he found himself in his seat once more as he started to complete some assignments that were due that day. He knew that he should have done them when he got back home from school, but lately he'd been hearing his mother's voice and it had been distracting him. 
the classes for school were normal for the second day, as they all earned more about English, science, modern art history, and many others. Once it reached the class for hero informatics, the class was brimming with excitement, and Izuku was more mellow about it, he just wishes that it wasn't All Might as a teacher for the class. As soon as the massive man entered the class and started talking about a battle training exercise, Izuku knew that Bakugo was going to see if he could fight him just to beat him down again. Useless, freak, quirkless monster, fill yourself, we don't need you here. Izuku shook those words from his memory as he moved to collect his hero suit as he left the room and entered the changing rooms. He watched as some of the other boys had been changing into their hero costumes as he slowly but surely got into his own. It was a long-sleeved muscle shirt that had padding in the chest area to prevent massive damage to his chest, combat boots that were red in color, as well as steel tooed, he had gauntlets around his wrists that increased his overall power in his attacks, and steel covering his claws in order to deal more massive damage. Everything except for his shoes were the color of dark green as he left the room and held his utility belt that was yellow in color to pay homage to Eraserhead that was filled with medical supplies and provisions for any kind of hero who he would team up with. As soon as he entered the room where they were going to be watching the test in, he got a good look at his classmates as he noticed a weird aura coming from one of the girls. It was the tall girl as she held a weird aura of a bat-like monster that was similar to his monster mother, it was weird because it was giving him a singing song sound that was attracting him. He kept it to himself as he paid attention to his teacher, but talked to Ichako unknown to the look that the tall girl was giving him at the moment. As All Might talked about what they would be doing for the assignment, he talked about how they needed to get inside the villain's base in order to stop a bomb from going off in 10 minutes. Not too hard, but it depended on who he was teamed up with, and he couldn't help but wish to not be teamed up with Kakin. As soon as everyone pulled a ball from the randomizer, he soon found out that he was teamed up with Achako as she jumped onto his tail as they looked at the teams going up against one another. Alright class the first teams to go up against one another is Team A consisting of young Bakugo and young Ida versus Team D consisting of young Midoriya and young Yuraka Team A will be the heroes as Team D will be the villains All Might called out. As Izuku and Achako left the building with a bomb in tow as they were placing it on one of the roof in order to make sure that the heroes can't find it at all. Once on the roof, Izuku stared at Achako as he decided to make a plan. Boy, mufflers. Do you think worthless Deku has a quirk? Katsuki asked, looking at the engine hero student. I don't know, from what he told me was that he didn't have a quirk. But from what he did at the entrance exams he seemed to have a quirk. Iida said, as the young man stared at Bakugo. Whatever, you deal with round face while I deal with worthless Deku. Bakugo said, as he moved towards the building. As he moved about the building after All Might told him that he can go, he looked in each and every room that he came across as he thought about what Izuku had done over the last 10 months. He had told the boy to kill himself in the last year they had at Aldera and thought he had when the Titans attacked Musatafu and heard that the Runt and his mother were in the area of the attack. He remembers laughing at how Deku probably kicked the bucket finally and would leave him alone for when he enters UA, only to find him there 10 months later. Now he will get some answers about how he developed this quirk of his and force him to use its full force to make sure that he isn't lying about how he never had this power until about 10 months prior to entering UA. Did you get the plan? Izuku asked Achako as she nodded her head. Alright, I will do my best to keep Iida and Kabakugo busy, you make some projectiles in order to use against Iida, he won't be able to make sharp turns on this roof. Izuku said, entering the stairwell. Good luck Achako called out as she collected some rocks and pebbles. Alright, time to show Kakin that I am not a worthless Deku. Izuku thought to himself as a mirage appeared behind himself in the form of a green-haired woman looking at him in sadness. Izuku ran through the floors closest to the roof as he ran into Iida as the boy had run to go past him. But just as he ran right next to Izuku they exchanged a look just before Izuku's arm stuck out faster than the boy could perceive and was clotheslined. As the boy flopped to the ground in pain Izuku jumped onto his prone body as he placed the handcuffs over his arms holding them in place. Iida has been defeated and is taken from the match All Might called out from the comms. Izuku knew that taking out Iida was the best way for the match to go in the way he wanted, since Kakin wouldn't try to go for the bomb. All he had to do was keep Bakugo busy in order to keep him from going after his teammate. He arrived around a corner when he saw Bakugo taken by surprise and went to go for an attack on him with an explosive right hook. Izuku changed his anatomy in order to tank the blast as he placed scales all over his body and increased his size in order to intimidate Bakugo. His dorsal plate started to glow and pulsate as he went on the attack in order to keep the bomber busy. He knew that he was strong enough to stop the young man all on his own, it was why he was capable of stopping Iida so fast. Izuku knew Bakugo though, he would use anything necessary in order to win, even Izuku's own knowledge against him. He dodged an explosive left jab that the blonde had thrown at him as he tail swiped the boy across the massive room they were in. 
Young Bakugo you have 5 minutes left to get to the bomb All Might warned. As the fight continued on screen, the black-haired tall girl spoke out to the teacher. All Might sir, do you think that this fight is a grudge match between the two? The girl asked, curiously. Whatever do you mean young Yeoi Rozu? All Might asked, confused. Well it seems like Bakugo-kun has been fighting based on a grudge, and Midoriya-san has been fighting him to a standstill when he was more than capable of taking out Iida, who is in a different weight class entirely with one arm. Do you think Midoriya-san is fighting for a grudge match? Yeoi Rozu asked. I wouldn't think so, I heard about his plan. He was going to originally keep both Bakugo Shonen and Iida Shonen busy for the entire 10 minutes before time was called. But now that you think about it, he wasn't even winded from a blow like that to his left arm. All Might muttered. The class continued to watch as Izuku tossed Bakugo around the room like a ragdoll, as he finally showed something of a sign of his lowering stamina. He was breathing lightly as Bakugo was breathing heavily. Then there was a ding heard in the room that caught both boys off guard, and Bakugo was smiling fearly. Pointing his gauntlet at Izuku he started monologuing about how if Izuku knew about his quirk so much, then he should know about what happens when he has a storage tank for his sweat to accumulate. Stop this Bakugo shown and you could kill him All Might called out, stunning the whole class. He won't die if he dodges Bakugo called out releasing the blast. They all watched as Izuku's face became filled with an unexplainable look of fear, as they saw his eyes start to dull a little bit before growling even more and moving around the blast as best as he could towards the boy. Needless to say, that what happened next was completely bonkers for the class, as Izuku moved through the blast, as he kept his eyes closed and stuck his arm through the blast range towards Bakugo's face and grabbed it before slamming the boy to the ground. As soon as the camera's view was blocked by the smoke and debris, they saw something that honestly looked beautiful as glowing blue and green lights came from through the smoke and caused it to move away faster to see what happened. As they looked at the screen, they found Izuku standing over Bakugo with an intense look on his face as he stared the boy in his eyes and spoke for the first time to him in the exercise. Can you not think for once in your pathetic life? If you let a blast that loud as well as massive indoors, you could cause the whole building to collapse, Achako is on the roof with nothing to protect her from falling 19 stories to the ground, you could have killed her, Izuku roared as he was shown to have multiple burns all over his torn body. His hero suit had been reduced to cinders as his body was revealed to everyone in the room watching the fight. There was burned starburst-shaped scars on his lower torso, as well as a massive handprint over his left shoulder. But the most important scar that they could see on his body was the massive words displayed over his back from where Izuku screamed at Bakugo that wasn't covered by his dorsal plates. The words clearly stated. The quirkless wonder quirkless Deku. A worthless hero. As soon as the entire room saw those words the only things that people could ask was, how the hell did he get that scar, hero team wins. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.